That all being said, there absolutely comes a point where healthy, necessary reflection after a breakup crosses the line into self-deprecation. Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Ash, your truth-bombing fairy godmother for everything love, dating, and relationships. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that I've gotten several comments about, specifically on my breakup related videos, which are from those of you who are dealing with your own feelings of guilt and regret following the end of a relationship. And on my last video, which was about breaking free from a toxic relationship, I heard quite a few of you say that you were struggling to forgive yourself for your own toxic behaviors or ways in which you might have contributed to the end of your relationship. So if that's something that you can relate to, then this video is for you because I'm going to be discussing feelings of guilt after a breakup, how to let go of shame, and most importantly, how to forgive yourself. But first, if you would like new love, dating, and relationship videos every single week, please consider subscribing. I truly do think that we just have the most empathetic, wise, intelligent, insightful little bunch of subscribers here, and I would love to see our community grow. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about in regards to this subject is the process of reflecting on a relationship and realizing that perhaps you did behave in ways that were toxic or unhealthy. And I think it's safe to say that all of us have been there. And this is especially true if you were acting in response to what was already a toxic situation. Toxicity breeds toxicity. And it becomes increasingly difficult to always keep a level head the longer that you are entangled in a volatile, unstable, toxic relationship with someone. And I think it's only natural that you would get to a point where always responding in mature, thoughtful, healthy ways would become impossible. And this is one of the many reasons that lingering in a toxic relationship is a terrible idea because it really does encourage you to behave in ways that you otherwise wouldn't. When I was in high school, I was in a very toxic relationship with someone for about two years. And of course, like I said, I was in high school, so I was a teenager, I was young, and there was definitely a lack of emotional maturity there. But regardless, I acted like a crazy person in response to that dynamic. The constant lies I was told, the cheating, the overall lack of trust, the drinking, the drug use, all of those things expectedly brought out the absolute worst in me. I became a very damaged person and unfortunately acted in ways that aligned with that. I became possessive and controlling and accusatory and always on edge, which is how I think a lot of people would act when they've well and truly overstayed their welcome in a toxic relationship. So what I want you to do is recognize that even if you did behave in toxic or embarrassing ways, that those behaviors do not define who you are at your core. The fact that you're able to reflect, acknowledge, and take responsibility for the ways you may have acted or negatively contributed to a toxic dynamic tells me that you are very much not a toxic person at your core. Truly garbage, shitty people do not take ownership for their mistakes, nor do they take the time to sit and truly think about ways that they could have reacted more lovingly. We all make mistakes and we all behave in ways that we aren't particularly proud of, especially when we're hurt or in pain. But the difference between everyone else and genuinely toxic people is the willingness to admit when they were wrong, to grow, learn, and do better next time. Which if you're here on this channel watching this type of content, I can guarantee you that you fall into the category of someone who is genuinely making the effort to reflect and evolve. Now, that all being said, there absolutely comes a point where healthy, necessary reflection after a breakup crosses the line into self-deprecation. It is not fair or reasonable for you to be taking 
all of the ownership for the way that your relationship unfolded. And when it comes to taking responsibility for your mistakes, I want to make an important distinction here, which is the difference between guilt and shame. And this is something that Dr. Brenna Brown, who is an incredible researcher, breaks down so simply, which is that guilt is the recognition that you behaved in a way that was bad. Whereas shame is the belief that you are bad. And this is an incredibly vital difference when it comes from learning from your mistakes versus staying stuck in this endless, hopeless, unproductive space of believing that you are just this terrible, unforgivable monster. As Brenna Brown has explained it, when the emphasis is on our behavior, so I did something bad, versus our identity, I am bad, we are much more likely to respond with empathy and compassion towards ourselves, and therefore much more likely to learn and change for the better. So in that regard, as terrible as guilt is to feel in the moment, guilt is also a profound learning tool by encouraging us not to repeat the same unwanted toxic behaviors. Whereas when you are shaming yourself and holding yourself mentally and emotionally hostage in the space of believing that you are a toxic person, you give yourself nowhere to go. Because when you label yourself as a toxic person, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you stop giving yourself the opportunity to be anything else. I think one of the reasons so many of us stay stuck in cycles of shaming ourselves is because we're holding on to a belief that if we let ourselves out of this self-imposed purgatory, we are letting ourselves off the hook and therefore destined to repeat the same unwanted behaviors. However, shaming yourself over and over and over again doesn't prevent you from repeating the same mistakes. In fact, as I explained before, it does quite the opposite. Telling yourself over and over again that you are a terrible person doesn't inspire growth or change. Whereas if you come from a place of simply recognizing that, yes, you know what, my behavior wasn't great, but I am a good, generous, inherently loving person at my core, you are much more likely to behave in ways that honor that inherent goodness in the future. So when you feel yourself stuck in a cycle of judging or shaming yourself, why not just simply take notice and write it down? Why not just start a daily, journaling practice with yourself where you write down the ways in which you recognize that you might have behaved in a toxic manner and perhaps ways that you could respond more effectively in the future. And this isn't about punishing or reprimanding yourself, but it's about holding yourself accountable in a way that is genuinely empathetic and loving and therefore inspires real growth. And importantly, during this same journaling practice or meditation session or whatever it is that it looks like for you, practice actively forgiving yourself for your behaviors that you're not particularly proud of. And believe it or not, forgiveness truly is a choice. It's not something that you just sit around and magically wait to wash over you. It is something that you choose to extend to yourself by accepting your past behaviors for what they were and understanding that you did the best that you could with what you had at the time. And forgiving yourself doesn't mean that you're saying what you did was or is okay. It's simply the recognition that although you did behave in ways that you wish you had hadn't, that you're a flawed human being and as a result there is nothing wrong with you. It's the choice to let go of what you can no longer control and to instead move forward with the lessons that you've learned and the commitment to do better next time. And as awkward as it might be and as much as you might feel unforgiven, Practice offering yourself forgiveness anyway. A really powerful practice that Tara Brock talks about in a lot of her work is the practice of simply imagining what it would feel like if you were to experience 
blank. So in this instance, see if you can simply imagine what it would feel like if you were to offer yourself complete forgiveness for any toxic past behavior. Imagine what you would tell yourself if you were to truly forgive and accept yourself for your past mistakes and what that might feel like for you. Close your eyes and sit with that or write it down on paper and really try to immerse yourself into the experience of what it would feel like to let go and forgive. Because sometimes we're not quite ready to truly forgive ourselves and that's okay. So sometimes simply imagining the experience of self-forgiveness can assist us with priming us for the real deal later on. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up but I am considering making an extension to this one because something else I think worth discussing in relation to guilt and forgiving yourself after a breakup is the subject of repeating patterns. Because as much as self-forgiveness is so important, learning to identify repeated patterns and ways that you may be perpetually contributing to unwanted outcomes when it comes to your relationships is also a vital piece to this discussion. So if that's something that you're interested in hearing about or that you would like me to discuss, please let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise, much love as always, and I will see you all next week.